Morning, good friends. This is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got a friend that's uh, just down 35W in Austin, Texas, I believe, and his name is Tom T H O M Singer. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing great, Brad. Thanks for having me. You got your coffee for Synergy Cafe? Uh, I do, but it's not within so reach. So. I got my little Minnesota duck. It's actually oh, there he goes. He disappeared. There he is. <laughs> this isn't really a loon, but it, Minnesota loon. That's where we're from. So I don't do these very long because people have that commodity of time that uh, we've all got in common. So just uh, get right to the point and let's uh, learn a little bit about you. You live in Austin, right? I do. I've lived in Austin for 27 years. Really? I got yeah, a I came niece here down there. It was trendy. It was about 800,000 people. There's now 2.3 million people and we've only built one road. See, they're following you. Yeah, yeah I was a trendsetter, I <laughs> guess. So you got a family down there? Are you by yourself? or? No, I've been married. Uh, I got married right after I came to Austin. Um, my wife and I both transplanted from California. Uh, we had two daughters. who uh, One is 21. She's a senior at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. And we have one who is a junior in high school. Wonderful. So what you do is you are a speaker, correct? At yeah, I make, for events. the last 10 years, I've made my living as a professional speaker and as a master of ceremonies at large corporate and association events. See, a lot of people don't know how you can do that. They, they probably say, well, so what do you do for a real job? Right? Yeah, I, you get that? I, I hear that a lot. And it's, uh, it's, it's a great business being part of the meetings, the meetings industry. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's one of those things that it, it took a lot of study to fully understand in the corporate and association world, what makes for a good speaker and, and what people are looking to hire. Yeah, and in even just trying to understand the, the why would someone hire somebody for an event to speak at it? I mean, you, you see the Tony Robbins and the motivational stuff and all that, more consumer related, but why would a company bring somebody in? You know, and, well, I mean, the, the celebrities, even, even the Tony Robbins and the people like that who get hired by companies, they're really expensive. The budget for yeah. a celebrity speaker can run 25 to hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, for a speaker. And a lot of organizations just can't afford that. So they end up bringing in people who aren't famous, but who bring really good content and a connection of that content to a really good style of being a speaker. Because my belief is, is that the speaker and or the master of ceremonies sets the tone for the whole event. Yeah. So even if they're really smart, if they get up there and bore everybody the rest of the day, it's you're always playing catch up. <laughs> and at the same time, if it's just somebody who's like whiz bangy, you know, comedy or something like that, people come to these events to learn and to walk away with to do items. Mm -hmm. So you've got to find that perfect match between content and style. Yeah, when you got that very expensive person, sometimes they're a draw, but they better be a really significant draw to be able to get a return on your investment. I'm speaking from like a producer point of view. Because I've hired speakers thinking that they're going to be a, a draw when they were on like HGTV or something for our home shows. And then they didn't draw what I thought they were going to draw and it ended up being just an expense. The studies that have been done by the, uh, some like experts in the meetings industry actually show that celebrities don't draw like they used to. It used to be like mm -hmm. people would be like, wow, if I come to this event, I get to meet Colin Powell. But I think people realize that the celebrities speak and they're out the door. The, you know, Many speakers, their greatest skill is getting to the airport. 15 minutes after they say, thank you very much. So people, <laughs> so people realize that they're not going to necessarily hang out with these people, you know, in the bar. So it's not really as much of a draw as I think it once was. Yeah. I think uh, like what you're talking about, someone that's skilled at interacting with the audience. Cause a lot of times, uh, maybe you may, maybe hired, like you said, like as an MC or just an opening act for the president to talk. And it kind of loosens everything up because oftentimes these corporate events, it's, they bring the spouses with, and the people that work for the company know each other, but the spouse is there not knowing anybody, really. So you got to do something to kind of break the ice for them so they feel more comfortable. And that way, when the president comes out and talks, they feel a little bit more part of the, part of the family kind of thing. And, and even a lot of people who work at these companies, or if you're in an association event, they don't really know each other. They might belong to the organization for years, but they haven't really interacted. Mm -hmm. And so I actually built my career. I called myself the conference catalyst because a lot of my content was as we moved a decade ago when I started this, as we moved more to the smartphone, people weren't socializing as much with other people in the room. I mean, you could walk into a room uh, where there's going to be a speaker, and it used to be you'd sit there, and the person next to you, two chairs away, you'd say, so where are you from? And you'd look at their name tag, Brad, and then you'd have a little conversation. 
Now you walk into that room and everybody is staring down at their phones right. and having any conversation. So I, uh, part of what I still talk about, but, but it was all that I did for the first several years, is I called it connecting with people in a gadget crazy world. And I spun it around and I talked about how do we use this conference as a human laboratory? So when I spoke at a conference, people would be more engaged with each other than they would otherwise. So that's sort of how I built my career was, was getting people fired up to realize the speakers and the learning is great. The real power is in the other people in the audience. And if we just are texting with the office all day, we're really leaving the value of the event behind. Yeah, part of my mission is to move the online chatter back into real life activity. Exactly yes. that. Because uh, yep. yeah, you, you don't want to just throw away the phones, but can you discipline yourself enough to set it down for a little while and have a real conversation? <laughs> well, one of the mistakes is, is, especially if the MC is just someone from the company who's not really skilled in engaging the audience, yep. They'll stand up and say, hey, for this event, everybody put your phone away. Well, in 2018, 2019, people aren't going to put their phones away. So it's creating a culture within the little community of the conference where people can know when to go check their phones and know when they should really be connecting with the other human beings who've attended the conference, which is where the value is. So are you a regional speaker? Are you go national or global or how do you... Do that. So I've been to China, I've been to the Bahamas, Bermuda, and Canada, but I don't really call myself an international speaker. I, I, I know, you know a lot of people, if they, you know, if, if, if they even speak in Puerto Rico, they say, I'm an international speaker, and I have to remind them that that's part of the United right. States. But uh, I, I, I speak all over the country. I, I live in Texas, but I end up in, I've spoken in like 42 of the, the, the 50 states over my career. Minnesota? I have. Yeah. I have. I love <laughs> Okay. Give me a little Mall of the Americas any day of the week. I like that place. Yeah, it's a big mall, isn't it? <laughs> See, if you've seen one, you've seen a mall. <laughs> so, again, I don't like to do these too long, but could you maybe share how to get a hold of you and, um, and, and who might get a hold of you? And then what I do with these is I record them and put them up on YouTube and put them out on different blogs and propagate them out to the world. And you never who know, know who might uh, bump into it with a key word here and there. Nice. If, if someone's looking and they, and they need to have an engaging sort of interactive speaker and or a master of ceremonies, because my favorite thing to do is to be the opening speaker and then stay for the whole event as the master of ceremonies, sort of weaving together all of the content and sort of doing recaps of what's been going on the whole time. So I like to be engaged with the event. I, I, I like to do that. Uh, somebody's looking for either or of those, uh, you just go to TomSinger.com. It's T-H-O-M-S-I-N-G-E-R.com. All my contact information is there, and uh, you know that's where they find out about what I do. Well, perfect. Well, I'm going to put this in the can, as they say, and beam it up to the universe and propagate it out. And uh, the whole thing about the Synergy Collaborative, if you see it online, if you would share it also, and that sort of well, one hand washes the other and creates that synergistic effect. 